In this video, I'm going to review extraction of text from Microsoft Word documents using Python. Uh, to get started, I'm going to use a library called Python DOCX. So I'm going to install that package using pip as my package manager. If you're using Anaconda, that's another option. And then I'm going to install that. Uh, I'm going to make that functionality available in my Python Jupyter Notebook by running from docx import document. Um, and the instructions are on this website, uh, read the docs. All right, so before I sort of open a file, I want to see what's on my file system. So to do that, I'm going to use the, the exclamation point as a shell escape. So everything that happens after the exclamation point is really happening on my computer, not in the Jupyter Notebook environment. So since I'm running a Mac, I can use the ls command to see what the structure of my uh, folder is. And so ls, look at the contents of the folder. And then I'm going to say, look in the folder essays, which is a folder of Word documents. And I only want to see files that end in docx. So all of this is basically a command being sent to my Mac to show me what's in the essays directory and ends in DOCX. So I have a whole bunch of essays. Um, I'm just going to, in this notebook, look at one of them. So I've selected a path to one of those notebooks, essays, and then the DOCX name. I'm going to load that into a variable called document. So let's see what type document is. And it's a, 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 a type DOCX, which is specific to this Python library that we are using. So it's not a normal Python type. And so the way that we access the data in that variable is going to be different than normal. So one way to explore that, I'm going to type the word document and then a period and then hit the tab key on my keyboard. And then I get this menu. And this is a set of options that I have that are specific to this variable type. So if you cruise through here and think about the fact that this variable is holding a Microsoft Word document, these options sort of make sense. You could add a page break, add a paragraph, add a picture to a Word document, and those are all commands that are available for this variable. Now what I care about, uh, let's just go down to the bottom, so that's all the commands that are available. So I'm going to use document paragraphs and see what that gets us. So I'm going to press enter here and that gets us to my next cell. So, uh, we'll get that out. Okay. So now I've got my document dot paragraphs and let's take a look at what that is. All right. So it's got a bunch of gobbledygook that I don't recognize. Um, and so let's check what the type of document paragraphs is. That's a list. We'll, we'll notice that it has a square bracket starting out here and a square bracket at the end and a bunch of commas. And so this document dot paragraphs is a list of things. And the thing being like this doc text paragraph, blah, 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 blah. So even though we can't quite understand what the elements of this list are, document dot paragraphs is a list. So since it's a list, we could access the zeroth element of that list. And we get back some uh, thing that's basically the same thing that we're looking at here. So document dot, document dot paragraphs in the zeroth element is this thing. And so then we have to go back and read the documentation on actually how to access the text in there. Um, and so it turns out it's dot text as the access method. So if I um, look at the zeroth element in the list, which is the first paragraph in my document, and the text of that is data science 601. So that's just the text of the first paragraph. The second paragraph for list element one has some actual content that sort of looks interpretable as a paragraph, which sort of makes more sense. So even though this was probably the title of the document, it got interpreted as a paragraph just by the formatting of the document. Okay, so now we, we recognize that we had a whole list of paragraphs to, to access. And so one might do that using, instead of sort of manually here incrementing the value, we could use a, uh, a for loop. So that's what this code is doing from this Stack Overflow page. I'm accessing each paragraph in the document, and I'm going to have a counter. And the counter is going to start at 1 for the first paragraph. 
And then uh, if the length of the text is greater than zero, so that means like a non-empty paragraph, then we're just going to print the index and the text in that paragraph. All right, so as we sort of saw before, paragraph one or list element zero is just the title of the document. And then the second paragraph of the first element of the list is the text of the first paragraph. Um, and so that sort of like continues on. And there are six paragraphs in this document. Okay, so now we feel pretty confident. We've got the Microsoft Word document text in paragraph format in Python variables. So now we're pretty excited that, that we've gotten out of Word and we're in Python. Probably we're going to do this for a bunch of Word documents. And so, so remember that we had all these uh, Word documents to look at. And so we're probably going to want to take that, that thing that we wrote, that for loop, and we're going to put that into a function. And the function will allow us to call that snippet of code every time that we need it. So to summarize what I've shown so far in this notebook, I just set, copied that code into a new cell here. And we can rerun that to show that really this is all the code that we need. And this is the output that we're getting. So I'm going to collapse that with this blue bar over here. And then basically just take this text and throw it into a definition body. So I've got a, a function here. So I'm going to call docx to dict. And then I'm going to have that code. So this is basically the same code with a few modifications. And I'll walk you through what those are. So I want the function to be sort of generic to any file. So I'm going to take this uh, string here and make that an argument to my function. So that's why I'm, I'm going to say it's going to take the name of the file as its input argument. So the rest of this code doesn't know which file we're operating at other than it's just the name of file. The other significant change here is that I need to store the output from my function rather than printing it. So I, I'm going to choose uh, for late, later, for reasons that will become clear later, uh, a dictionary to store my, my output rather than a print statement. So here in the initial code, we were just sort of playing around and looking at the print values, but now we want to store those to a variable. Okay, so now just as before, we're going to use the same code. We're loading the document into that library and then storing that as a variable and then looping all the, over all the paragraphs. Now, as I said, I don't want to print things. I do want to store them to a variable. So here I'm going to use the docx dict library that I declared at the top of the function inside my loop and store each paragraph as a dictionary. So this is a key, is the, which paragraph am I in? And the value for that dictionary is the text paragraph. And then after I've finished all those loop iterations and I've gone over all the paragraphs, then I will return that dictionary to the, the calling function. OK, so let's see what that looks like if I just run this uh, function passing in a single file uh, path and not storing any output. All right. Oh, I didn't execute this, so now I have to execute that. And then in order, so now I get back a dictionary. Uh, so the key of 1 is pointing to that. 2 is pointing to this. So that should look pretty familiar because we saw that up here. So often when I'm playing around, I'll use print statements that sort of re reflect the, the data structure that I'm aiming for. So here I had keys and values uh, that was in my loop. So that when I go to store those, it's pretty straightforward to translate from print statements to the data structure. Okay, now again, I don't actually care about printing this dictionary to the screen every time. So the more normal way that I'd call something is I'd say, I'm going to call the function, I'm going to pass in the variable that I care about, in this case the path, and then store the output to a variable. All right, so there we didn't get any output. So to see what the content of that is again, I would type docx dict. And that would be the same as the output that we had before. All right, so we've just gone over this whole big long notebook to look at one Python file, or sorry, one Word document, but there was a whole sequence of Word documents that we had to pro process. So I'm going to switch over to this other notebook here. I usually like finish one phase of the investigation, and then when it's gotten sort of complicated enough, I switch over to a new notebook. 
So here in this notebook, I'm going to take what we learned from the first notebook and implement that for a multiple notebook, a uh, multiple Word document situation. Now, the nice thing is in my previous notebook, I, I wrapped everything I st understood into a function. And so where I start with this notebook is I say, well, this is what I learned, that we can write a function called doc2dix and uh, we can pass in the file name and get back a dictionary. So that's right from the previous notebook. And if we start there, then what we get back is, uh, sorry, I have to define this one. There we go. So getting back in this notebook, the same uh, result that we got last time. And so now I have to figure out how am I going to get all those those Word document paths into uh, this function call. So as you may have saw at the top of the notebook, I'd import OS. Basically, the OS command is very similar to uh, the shell escape, except here it's all with, within Python. So I'm going to use OS list here this time. And I get back a list. So notice it's starting out with a square bracket and a bunch of strings and commas. So it's a list of strings, but in this case, the list here is just listing the contents of this directory. So it's pretty similar to that ls command we saw before. So we're getting back this list of files. That looks pretty relevant, but it, if we passed one of these to that function, the function wouldn't know that we actually had the essays as part of the path. So this list dir isn't quite what we need yet. So we have to sort of add to the front of this string the folder path. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, I'll take a, a pretty straightforward one. And you'll also notice that some of these files actually end in, DOS, uh, end in .txt or .dat. So these are going to be problems, and we're going to actually have to filter to get only back the, the file extensions that we want. So we've got some, some messes to clean up here, the directory name and the file extensions. So along those lines, uh, I'm going to make a new variable called uh, directory, which will be what directory I'm looking in. And uh, I'm going to pass it into this OS list here, so I'm getting back the same list that I had printed out just up above. I'm going to loop over every element of that list. So this is, I want to do something to every element. And what I'm going to do to every element in that list is look for whether the, the, the string ends with uh, DOCX or something else. So in this case, does the file name end with DOCX or DOC, in which case it's a Word document, and then we want to do something to it. Again, because I'm exploring whether or not this for loop does what I want, I'm going to start with a print statement. The other uh, trick that I'll play here is that I'm both looking in the essays directory, and then I'm going to print the combination of which directory I'm in and the file name. So when the file name is something like, uh, let's say, week two summary docx, we're going to join the path to the folder as well as the file. And that'll get us a string that looks like what we want to pass into our function. Remember, our function is looking for the full path to the, the, the Word document. So now we've, we've got back in Python the the input that we're going to need to feed to our function and only for word documents ending in docx or doc so because we've printed all this out i'm going to take the same uh, for loop with the if statement and replace the print statement with the call to our function so remember our, our function at the top of the file was docx to dict so we want to um, pass all those arguments to the function one at a time. So I'm going to loop over every Word document, call this function. So the function here is docx to dict, and then that's going to read the individual file and then output a dictionary. Now the, the fun part is we want to not print those. We want to actually store those through a variable. And here, again, I'm going to use a dictionary. So every uh, result from this function is going to be a dictionary stored as a value to another dictionary. So we're creating a nested dictionary here. 
So to sort of explain this more easily, I'm gonna just run the command and get back some values here in this dictionary. And if we look at the dictionary keys, this is every key in the dictionary is a file path. So that was the, the thing that we're looping over appended with the directory. So that is basically the path to the Word document is the key to our top level dictionary. Now you'll notice I said top level dictionary because we have a nested dictionary here. And so if I look in that first uh, uh, key, what do I get back? I get back a dictionary of all the paragraphs by indexed by the which paragraph I'm in. So now what we see is this one variable contains all of the Word documents and then each Word document's text by paragraph. 